Hello, everybody. And welcome to the special town meeting. Before we get started, I'd like to have uh, the town clerk and Ianatelli come up and give a quick little note. So there seems to be some confusion about the special town election next Saturday on the 21st. I'm hearing there's a rumor out there that if you vote for both candidates, then they will fill both seats. That is not true. I want to put that out there. If you vote for the two candidates, it's an overvote and it becomes a blank ballot, so it's a vote for no one. So spread the word because I've heard it from a few people and um, just vote for one. And just remember that the hours are different. They're 10 to 5. And we'll see you all on Saturday. Thank you. Before we get started, we're going to start with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The time is now 6.02, and I would ask the uh, town clerk to read the warrant. To either of the constables of West Bridgewater in the county of Plymouth, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of West Bridgewater qualified to vote in elections in town affairs to meet at the West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School Auditorium in said town on October 16th at 6 p.m. and then and the, then there to act on the following articles to wit. Pursuant to within the warrant, I have this day notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of West Bridgewater qualified to vote in elections and town affairs to meet at the time and place within mentioned by posting 15 attested copies of within warrant and also a revised warrant at the various locations throughout precincts one and two, 14 days at least before the aforesaid special town meeting. Patrick J. Galligan, Constable, Town of West Bridgewater. Thank you. With that, we're gonna open up with the first article. But before we begin, I just wanna remind everyone, all questions, all comments should be directed to me, Jason Ross, the moderator, and not to the people presenting, not to the people in the audience asking questions. Okay, so with that, article number one, we're gonna go with uh, Mr. Keith, the Chairman of the School Building Committee. Gary Key, 39 Tiffany Circle. Move that the town of West Bridgewater borrow $1.2 million for the purpose of paying costs of a feasibility study schematic de design to study the renovation addition or new construction for the Roselle McDonald Elementary School, which may include studying a possible consolidation with the Spring Street School and or the Howard School, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto and for which the town may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, MSBA, set amount to be expended under the direction of the School Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the town treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44 or pursuant to any other enabling authority. The town acknowledges that the MSBA's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and any cost the town incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the town and that the amount of borrowing and authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the feasibility study agreement that may be executed between the town and the MSBA. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Finance Committee. Finance Committee voted unanimously 5-0 to recommend this. Board of Selectmen? Recommended unanimously by the Board of Selectmen. Would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, please, Mr. Moderator. I have a prepared statement that um, I trust will um, help give the background for this article and uh, explain um, most of the questions and the thought process that goes into it. 
The school building committee is comprised of 25 community members and parents, school administrators and staff and public officials. The committee roster was approved by the MSBA in June and we met from them through September 12th to develop this feasibility study recommendation for the potential replacement of our elementary schools. We are following the same process established by the state that we used in the construction of this middle senior high school. Okay, first, just what is a feasibility study and just what are we getting for the $1.2 million requested by this motion? The initial step is to hire an owner's project manager or OPM who will act as the agent for the town of West Bridgewater. The hiring of this manager is a requirement of the 2004 Construction Reform Act as mandated by the Massachusetts School Building Authority. While, the initial, while this initial funding request is only for the feasibility study, the project manager will be engaged on behalf of the town throughout the duration of the project, through the feasibility study, through the design phase, and should a future project eventually be approved through construction. Next will, become, next will come the hiring of a designer, or more accurately, an architectural firm. Both the project manager and the designer will be selected from a bidding process, but they must be pre-qualified from the State Buildings Authority pre-approved list. The designer will be responsible for two key elements of this proposal, the preliminary design program and the schematic study. The preliminary design program includes the following, defining the pro programmatic, functional, spatial, and environmental requirements of the educational facility necessary to meet the district's educational program. Perform the review and investigation required to clearly define the existing building deficiencies. Review site conditions, site access and circulation, parking, zoning issues and limitations, utilities and facility services. Provide an evaluation of alternatives upon which the most educationally appropriate and fiscally responsible sol solution may be recommended. In other words, this feasibility study, this is the feasibility study on which the construction design will be based. The schematic study includes the following, an in-depth report detailing all findings, proposed project design, preliminary construction schedule, and estimated construction costs to be submitted to MSBA for approval. Develop a final design program and contract doc documents to establish the scope, budget, and schedule for the project. In, es in essence, after this two-year feasibility study, we come away with a set of plans ready for the town's approval and ready for the bidding process. It is important to note that the school building committee does not have any foregone conclusion at this point as to what the best option is for our elementary schools. That is the purpose of the feasibility study. Any information you may have heard about replacing one, two, or all three elementary schools and the associated costs for doing any of these options is not coming from the school building committee. We do not have the information to formulate any such recommendation. Now, just some additional information on the MSBA and the funding mechanism. To get on the MSBA list, we had to file a statement of interest supporting our case. In April 2022, two separate statements of interest were submitted for both the Roselle McDonald School and the Spring Street School. In September 2022, the MSBA staff conducted on-site surveys to obtain firsthand confirmation of the information that had been submitted. In December of 2022, the MSBA accepted the Roselle McDonald School for a feasibility study with a directive to include both the Spring Street School and the Howard School in options for consolidation. As such, a third statement of interest was submitted to the MSBA in March 2023 for the Howard School. You will notice that the wording of the motion primarily designates the Roselle McDonald School for the study with the phrase, quote, may include studying the Spring Street School and or the Howard School, unquote. This is based on the MSB directive, but rest assured the study will include looking at all options involving all three schools. Although, as I indicated earlier, it remains unclear what schools will be affected by the recommendation of the school building committee. This process also includes an assessment of the enrollment projections of the elementary schools through the next 10 years. And the MSBA has affirmed a design enrollment of 1,075 students for grades K through six. This compares to a current K through six enrollment figure of 733. The MSB calculations do not include pre-K numbers, although they allow for pre-K classrooms in design options. The reimbursement rate from the MSBA is a formula based on a minimum of 31 percentage points and then adjusted based on community income factor, community poverty, poverty wealth factor, and community wealth factor and community poverty factor. Additional incentives based on uh, green building design and maintenance programs are available. 
As a comparison, at the time of the feasibility study for the Middle Senior High School, we had a reimbursement rate of approximately 48%. And with incentives, we reached approximately 52% during construction. For the proposed feasibility study for the elementary schools, we are at 54.79%. And this percentage will be, implied, will be applied to the final cost of the requested feasibility study. Is it possible that this percentage will be lower two years from now should we move forward to final design and construction? Yes, that is possible. And it will be based on funding available to the MSBA at that time. But any significant reduction would certainly impact whether or not the school building committee would move forward with any recommendation to the town for any construction project. Admittedly, we are coming to you with an estimated projection of the, of the cost of the study. We won't have the exact cost until we go out to bid. The only guidance the MSBA offers is to look at the feasibility study costs of other projects in other communities, so we did just that. We looked at elementary school building projects in 12 communities around the state with similar student enrollments within the range of consolidation options that we might choose. The average cost of these 12 studies was 1.33 million, so we feel comfortable with the 1.2 million figure we are recommending. As a side note, in 2010, the approved amount for the feasibility study for the Middle Senior High School was 800,000. While the scope of that project versus this project may not be directly comparable, we are of course talking about half the school grades in each case. If you apply the established inflation factor of 40% from 2010 to 2023, 800,000 is now 1.12 million. Finally, let me cover, cover what why we are making this request by highlighting several key points from the statements of interest that were submitted to the MSBA. First, the overall age of the building. Spring Street was built in 1956. Howard was built in 1958 with renovations in 1971 and 1993. Roselle McDonald was built in 1968. Outdated or inadequate electrical heating, ventilation, and fire protection systems, capital expense needs for system repair, repairs and replacements will continue to increase as the buildings age beyond their useful life expectancy. Total current square footage in the three existing elementary schools is 112,000 square feet. For the other half of the grades in the middle senior high school, the square footage is 142,000 square feet. Overcrowding and a lack of classroom and specialist space due to increased enrollment. This is a different situation than we had 13 years ago when we conducted the feasibility study for the Middle Senior High School. Without this project, 14 modular classrooms will eventually be needed for our elementary schools, negatively affecting school operations, security, and parking. Estimated three-year leasing costs for these modular classrooms would be $5.5 million uninstalled and no MSBA reimbursement is available for modular classroom space. The MSBA process is highly competitive. For this eligibility period, West Bridgewater was one of only 10 communities statewide to enter the feasibility study phase. They clearly agree with the needs of our elementary schools that we presented to them. The school building committee unanimously supports this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Is this on? I hate to be first, but uh, first, my name's Jack Hughes, 640 North Elm Street. So I live in town and I've lived here almost 35 years. And I remember when we did the middle senior high school and we did the renovations at the Howard School. So your summary was excellent. You answered a lot of my questions in there, but my questions really are to the, the select board and to the town treasurer as because you want us to go borrow $1.2 million. So the first of is, is any of that eligible to get split at this 54% and what happens if we don't pay 1.2, we only pay 600,000 or 700,000. So the process is that we will borrow the $1.2 million at the appropriate time. We normally do that in as part of a municipal building, a municipal note in November of every single year. So we won't start to incur costs until sometime in the spring or the summer, and then the treasurer will make a decision whether or not it is an initial bonding or the full bonding at that point. Um, at this point, 
uh, we would be able to bond it over four, over five years. Um, and the annual payment for that is about $250,000 to $275,000. It'll vary a little bit, even though it'll be a fixed rate. Uh, we haven't gone out to bid yet. Rates, from what Scott informs me, is just under 5% uh, is what we would be looking at. About $300,000 per year bonded for five years. Um, that will have an impact on the average residential tax bill just for a $458,000 house. So if you have a $458,000 assessment, the average impact to your payment will be about $75 per year. Obviously, if your house is worth more, it goes up. If it's worth less, then it goes down. However, I think also the spirit of your question is that we are going to then receive reimbursement at some later date. And as Gary mentioned, that percentage is locked in. So during that process, we will expend funds, we will borrow the money so that way we can pay, and then as we receive reimbursement, Scott will then borrow less in future years so we'd have a less impact in those out years. The last part is, is that in two to three years, we will come back to you, assuming this passes, to build a building of which time whatever is outstanding and remaining can be rolled back into that larger loan. And at that point, because it would be amortized over a much longer period of time, your annual impact would be less. Okay, thank you. Um, you also said that the um, project manager is the first step. And is there any chance that we could use the project manager or we had before, or are we locked into this new list? And, and uh, how come this project manager is so expensive? <laughs> the the project manager the existing project manager um is most likely the project manager we had this building is my understanding they are still on the state's pre-approved list so they they could respond to the bid once we put it out um beyond that it would be subject to the bidding process and then subject to a selection process by the school building committee um the expense the expense just comes from the fact that you have both the architect and the opm um, putting together a full set of design plans, um, not only for the final uh, uh, design that with the school building committee may be recommending, but also the options that we have to present to the Mass um, School Building Authority in order to prove to them that we've exhausted all possibilities for the best recommendation for the town. And that's a two-year process um, with, a, with a lot of people working on that, um, not only the OPM and the architect, but all the subs that feed into that design process. All right, thank you. Uh, Neil Conley, 376 Walnut Street. Uh, this, <clears throat> the committee that puts, uh, that's always seeing this, are they uh, on TV? Like we do the uh, school committee meetings are viewed and everything. So if they, if they meet, it's considered open meeting, right? So I was just curious if you could have cable in there when they meet so that people can turn on the cable station West Bridgewater and they can follow along so they can keep up the process. And uh, I'm gonna put the cart before the horse. I've talked to a couple people and I, I don't know, <clears throat> I think that people of the town should uh, decide if they wanna build a new one or renovate instead of doing three, you could say, why don't we just build one, have that cart in front of us to say, there's no sense in renovating them. There's three schools out there. They're very old, they're outdated, Asbestos could be in there. You get into these renovations, cost a lot more, and you open up Pandora's box. But I mean, it might be too late now. But, but I think the way it's leading, they need a new school. And if they got to put them all under one roof, why would you want to do one on uh, reverb or someone? I do one over. <clears throat> so let me answer the first question. Um, the, the School Building Committee, as I said, has met from June through September. Those meetings, um, they were all public meetings and were posted. They were not broadcast. Um, we have made a commitment that should this motion pass and we continue to go into the process through feasibility, all future meetings will be recorded and, and posted for broadcast. Um, renovation will be part of the feasibility study process. That's mandated by the MSBA. We have to look at renovation options just like we did for this building. This building had three renovation options and two new construction options before we selected the final one that um, we're sitting in right now. But renovation um, slash addition is part of the feasibility study and we have to look that, at that as an option. Hey, and so going forward, you'll be filming, uh, showing the things on TV, thank that, you. That's correct. 
uh, Joe West, 34 Columbus Ave. I just um, wanted to ask, is there any cash on hand left? I know before when we had the field meetings, they were talking, we had cash on hand and that's why the pickleball field went through. I, I didn't know if any was left over. That's my first question. And um, if the project manager's budget goes over the 1.2, do we have to come for another vote for to borrow more money or how is that ran? It won't go over the 1.2. Um, the 800,000 that we appropriated for this building, we were, came in below budget with that. Um, we would monitor that through the bidding process and um, we would not go over the 1.2. I am not coming before this town meeting asking for more money. <laughs> and, and is there any cash on hand left with the town to put towards that or is the 1.2 what we have to borrow and you just keeping cash on hand aside? So we, sorry. Um, so there is cash on hand at this point. Um, is what they call ca free cash. Free cash. And so. at the time that we started this process, it had not been certified by the state. It has been, um, and this is the largest free cash we've ever had. Um, so we're going to use that a little bit to be able to buy a truck. Um, the one item though is is that when you look at long term capital projects. It's not fiscally, it's, it's much wiser to borrow. Once we receive the reimbursement, we can come back to town meeting and we can look at using cash to maybe pay it off if that's what we wanna do. But initially the right thing to do would be to borrow it and then revisit it at a later date if possible. Okay, no, thank you. Any further questions? If not, this is gonna be a two thirds vote. Before we go for a vote, I'm gonna call for a ballot vote and the town clerk is gonna explain the process. So we have a new way of doing secret ballots. We don't have those little yes or no papers anymore. We're using the voting machines that you use at elections. They're programmed to count the yes and no votes. You will get a ballot and it's very simple, there's a yes, there's a no. You fill in the circle next to the one that you want, you put it through the machine and the machine counts it. Um, you need your pink card. You're not gonna get a ballot if you don't have your pink card. You can go to any ballot box, any voting booth, it's not separated by precinct or anything. Everyone is going to go out my left. There's people there to mark your cards to give you a ballot, you vote and you're gonna come back in on my right. And please vote, come back, go to your seats because when everybody mills around, it takes forever. We're trying to shorten this process so we can all get out of here at a reasonable time. Make sure you fill in the ballot, the little bubble, no checks, no X's, because the machine sometimes has difficulty um, reading that. So if the tellers could all go out right now and get ready, um, and then I will send you guys out in a minute. All right, does anyone have any questions? If you circle both, it don't count, Neil. <laughs> huh? You, you can't challenge a vote at town meeting, you can at election. No. <laughs> and, and just to be clear, a yes vote is in favor of the article, a no vote is against the article.
Okay, everyone. There was a total of 172 ballots cast. There was 144 yes votes, 28 no votes, um, with 84% of the votes going for yes, so the motion passes. And again, that was a two-thirds vote to pass. Article two, uh, Mr. Iannatelli, DPW director. Chris Iannatelli, 268 South Elm Street. Move that the town transfer from free cash a sum of $120,911 to be expended by the Department of Public Works to purchase an F-550 Ford 4x4 truck with a plow and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to dispose of the vehicle to be taken out of service in the best interest of the town. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Finance Committee? Finance Committee voted unanimously to recommend. Board of Selectmen? Recommended unanimously by the Board of Selectmen. Would you like to speak to the motion? This is a uh, service vehicle for the uh, fleet mechanic, for the town mechanic. Uh, he uses this vehicle for response to uh, any road service for police, fire, or DPW water school. Um, it will also be equipped with a plow, so it'll be one of our main pieces for winter snow removal. Uh, it also will carry, or does carry, the old one did as well, a 100 gallon tank, fuel tank in the back, which is used to fuel the 11 generators that we have in town around at the different buildings, municipal and school. Uh, the existing truck is 16 years old. It has internal engine issues with antifreeze and oil issues that have, have ruined the engine. And um, the replacement of a new engine would be 25 to 30,000. Um, it only has uh, 67,000 miles on it, but it is 16 years old and uh, it does have quite a bit of body rot as well. So um, it is out of service, it cannot run at this point. So uh, a fleet mechanic is using a uh, pick up our dump truck to go around and we're going to need to uh, uh, utilize a private vendor to uh, uh, fuel up these uh, generators throughout the winter, which could, you know, is, is a difficulty. We have to keep them all full, the ones that are using diesel fuel uh, for winter storms and so forth. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Neil Conley, 376 Walnut Street. We just bought two a couple of years ago, correct? Two. New trucks? Sure, yes. And Sean, yeah. is your name Sean? I don't know why you didn't get the job, but is that, uh, <laughs> did we buy two trucks when you were doing your job for the town? Or three? Back, back in 2017. Yeah, so a few years ago, time flies. And so the sales tax, it's don't include the sales tax, correct? No sales tax. No. No, sale, no sales tax on these? No. Where do you get those trucks? But uh, free cash. Where, can you just explain to me what is free cash and how do we get it? And how much does it go? Because at the last town meeting, we spent quite a bit of it. Was that, is that money all allocated for the past meeting? It's all been dished out. And this is money that's been left over and we gained more on it. So how do we get free cash? Can it through the chair? I'd like to ask Dave. So free cash is basically cash surplus. It's generated really in two different ways. One is, is that when you pass a budget at your annual town meeting, normally in May, if you pass a budget, say, for $100,000 for a department, and somebody only spends $90,000, that $10,000 then falls to surplus, which could be used the following year. Uh, the second is, is that we bring in revenue that we didn't anticipate. So this past year, we've had a lot of growth. Many of us are unhappy with the growth because many of it, much of it is residential. 
but we've also had substantial commercial growth as well. So they pull out building permits and it also impacts our taxes because that's tax revenue that we didn't budget for because you can't budget for it prior to it coming into town. So those two sources combined together then fall to what they call a surplus. The town accountant does all of her work in the summer and then it gets certified by the state. And in this case, it got certified at the end of September. So now going forward, we have this available <laughs> use of funds that we can, we can use. I got here about 10 years ago, and at that point we were borrowing everything, and quite frankly, it had a negative impact on your tax rate. So with the support of the board and the finance committee, we put together a financial plan that we said that whenever we have this source of funds, that we should use it for one-time capital purchases, because you're not paying interest on it, and you're also not making an impact to your tax rate at that point. So that's how we generate it. Um, and we'll be using a transfer from that pile of money in order to be able to pay for this. All right, and uh, the selectmen are gonna oversee, I don't know, why wouldn't you oversee getting rid of the truck? Like, would they give you, if, we, if I can go through the chair, like, if you go to sell the truck, when I have an old car, I turn it into the dealer. He says, I'll give you this much for the truck. Why aren't we doing something like that? It would either be a trade-in, or it would be auctioned as, as surplus material, depending on the condition. The truck doesn't run, so it will probably be towed to a, a salvage yard. But we'll see if we get a trade-in as well from the dealer. Yeah, and Neil, if I may just speak to that for a moment. We really do our earnest best to try to maximize every dollar that we can. So over the last couple of years, as we have been able to turn our inventory, we always receive a trade-in value, and then we place it online. And whatever is the greater of the two is what we do. And we have found, because online, you have a much broader reach, right? We have people that are picking up our vehicles literally from all around the country. And so in many cases, we're receiving $1,000 or $2,000 of trade-in, but we're getting multiples of that on auction. Even the generators, over the past two years, you purchased two tr generators. We only received $500 for each trade-in. We actually sold both of them combined for $5,000. That falls to your free cash that you mentioned earlier. But because we brought it into our office, we're able to centralize it, and we, had, we think we're doing a better job for the town at that point. And usually we have it up on PowerPoint. Are we going to get this truck shortly, or is it on order? Or is it's on, it, it would be on order. And if, if I'm in order, Mr. Chairman, I just want to say, not appointing that gentleman to his position is a bunch of crap. It's the worst thing I ever seen. That's out of order. You should be ashamed that's of out of order. what you did. Given the out of that's, town That's guy. out of order. Are there any relevant questions? Hearing none, I'm gonna call for a vote and this is a simple majority vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it unanimously. And Mr. Antelli, I believe this is your last town meeting, so I wanna thank you for your years of service for the town. And I want to apologize for all the times I've mispronounced your last name. <laughs> <laughs> Article three, uh, Mr. Parks, water superintendent. Move that the town vote to transfer from fiscal 24 water department budget line 5211 electricity a sum of $436.43 to be expended by the water commissioners for an FY23 unpaid prior year bill. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you. Finance Committee? Finance Committee voted unanimously to recommend. Thank you. Board of Selectmen? Recommended unanimously by the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Would you like to speak to the motion? Um, sometime during last summer, um, National Grid stopped billing us for the Walnut Street tank. It coincided with the fact that our UV reactor went down at the same time. It's not uncommon for us to receive um, electrical bills with zero balance because the solar credits that are applied because the town has solar credits coming. So it went for a couple of months. Uh, National Grid just caught up with it because it's a prior year bill. We need your approval to move money to pay this bill. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'm going to call for a vote, and this is a nine-tenths vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Ayes have it unanimously. Article four, and this is the last article, Mr. Parks. Uh, move that the town vote to transfer $720,000 from water surplus to be expended by the water commissioners for engineering iron manganese plant pre preliminary design and design and permitting and bidding. Thank you. Is there a second? <sighs> Finance committee. Finance committee voted unanimously to recommend. Thank you. Board of Selectmen. Recommended unanimously by the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Oh, um, so uh, 720,000. So this is the second part of you approved 240,000 for a pilot study. We're in the pilot study right now. The results are good. Um, this is to get us for the SRF funding. We have a deadline of next October 2024 to be ready to be shovel ready at that time. So this gives us uh, wetlands delineation, site work, surveys, geotech engineering, subborean so soil conditions, design and bidding, and all permitting. Um, we already own the land. We have infrastructure in place. It'll require some modifications. Um, but this is just so that we will make the state's fund next October. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah, uh, Jack Hughes, 640 North Elm Street. I don't see how we're paying for this. Is this a bond or what are we doing? Are we taking this out of our water bill or does this come out of free cash? How are we paying for this? So this is coming out of free cash. Um, free cash has accumulated over several years. We've also had some commercial buildings go up. They have large one-time tie-in fees that we get fees for. Um, so that's how we have this funding available. That'll leave us about $100,000 left in free cash in case an emergency comes up. More specifically, is it out of the water department's free cash, not the town's free cash? Yes. Okay, now I got it. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, I'm gonna call for a vote and this is a simple majority vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it unanimously. I also believe this is um, Selectman Reyes's last meeting as well, so I'd like to thank you for your years of service as well. Thank you, everyone. And with that being said, that concludes this special town meeting. The, uh, the time is 6.56. The meeting is now dissolved. <laughs>